I would just like to thank the organisers very much for the opportunity to participate in what is a very special event and really provide some insights from a representative of the mining industry to both the challenges and the opportunities associated with developing natural resource projects in Greenland. In recent years, there's been a, a big focus on resources in the Arctic. This is both metals, it's, it's hydrocarbons, it's, it's an area that's become under increasing attention. And Greenland has been, I guess, centre to that process. And importantly, the Arctic region has been a place where mining has taken place for a long time. In fact, some of the world's most famous mines are located within the Arctic region. The Norilsk region in northern Russia is arguably the world's most important nickel resource and con contributor to that particular commodity. We see in, in northern Alaska, the Red Dog zinc mine is the world's most important zinc mine. And Greenland has huge mineral wealth. And mining isn't new in Greenland, but it's, getting, it's receiving new attention. And uh, over the last 10 years, we've seen Greenland's profile grow considerably in the international community. And this coincides with the opening up of Arctic shipping lanes. And this is important. It increases Greenland's connectivity to the world, and particularly to the Asia-Pacific markets, which are where the large industrial countries and economies are located today. And these are major consumers of raw materials, and so essentially important customers to future mining ventures in Greenland. Now, Greenland itself obviously extends from near the North Pole to well outside the Arctic Circle, so a considerable geographic coverage. And so within that, we have, I guess, different challenges. But certainly in the south, we see an area that with increased warmth, increased accessibility, becomes an opportune point for natural resource development and new mining opportunities. Over the last 10 years, there's been a, a very big spend, if you like, in terms of exploration and development for natural resources in Greenland. And in parallel to this, we've seen Greenland's profile grow immensely in coverage from National Geographic to a variety of media outlets, to documentaries, and to news forums. And through that process, we've seen well over 500 million US dollars, probably closer to a billion, invested in evaluating, identifying, and exploring opportunities. And through that, we have a whole raft of new mining ventures. Some of them, uh, Minister Vittis has touched on, and that continues, the pipeline of projects continues to grow. So Greenland has had a very successful 10 years in which its profile and a footprint is now laid for the next step. We, in parallel to this, we've seen major advances in Greenland's regulatory framework, Greenland's Mining Act, taking on board uh, the the structure and the function of mining policy in some of the more sophisticated mining parts, mining jurisdictions in the world. We look at Canada, we look at Australia. Greenland also stands to benefit from other mining ventures in the Arctic region, learn from the experience, and so we can implore best practice here in Greenland for future development. So the next challenge for Greenland, the next step, which is already underway, is to convert this investment into successful development of natural resource opportunities in a sustainable manner for the long-term benefit of Greenlandic society. A big part of this is no doubt brings challenges to the program. Some of those challenges extend from local community level to the to top level of politics and the interface at an international level. But what's really important is development of the Greenland brand. A concept that we refer to is what does Greenland represent in the international investment community? Because Greenland, while it has a very stable backdrop, does not necessarily have a big precedent for successful foreign investment in large ventures. And so because of this, we have to work particularly cooperatively to generate a clear, uh, stable platform upon which foreign investment can be secured to successfully see projects developed. This involves management of stakeholder interests across a, a considerable and diverse array of stakeholders, and obviously a very close look at environmental considerations. It involves integration with local communities to understand what's important in order to achieve long-term benefit. A big challenge for Greenland has been the infrastructure gap. And I think it's very relevant, the former speaker touched on the, the concept of introducing infrastructure, particularly power, to help reduce that infrastructure gap. 
And that infrastructure gap is a big cost gap, if you like, between Greenland and other parts of the world. And it's essential that we build that gap, build that bridge, such that the cost structure of projects in Greenland can be competitive and compete in what is a very competitive international business, and that is natural resource supply. So increasingly there's awareness of this. There is a great opportunity for service pro providers, industrial service providers, in terms of port facilities and operation, in terms of power provision, to help bridge the gap through mechanisms such as public-private partnerships to help make Greenland more cost competitive and to ensure foreign investment can be secured. Of course, clear rules and regulations and consistency in policy are all important to demonstrate a stable platform for investment and growth. For Greenland, it's very important to focus on the advantages in order to be able to compete in the international marketplace. And Greenland does have advantages. Because of the ice cap, it's only really the coastal fringe of Greenland that is a point of focus for mineral exploration and mineral development. That means in a lot of areas you have direct shipping access. Now in Australia where I come from, you'll often see mines thousands of kilometres, certainly hundreds of kilometres from the coast. In Greenland, the proximity to, to port facilities, new port facilities may be required, but this is highly advantageous. There's also the potential for hydropower. We've just heard from the previous speaker about the opportunities. And this is very important for the long term. Not only is it a stable, cost-effective source of power, it avoids a carbon footprint, which is increasingly important in today's world moving forward. We have a proactive and supportive administration in Greenland that is out engaging in different forums internationally to promote the Greenland framework, the Minerals Act, and the opportunities. And we have a stable backdrop. These are all very important in successfully developing mining opportunities. For the best part of 10 years, our company, Greenland Minerals and Energy, has been involved in evaluating the Kavanafeld project in South Greenland. It's considered amongst the resource and investment community as a world-class opportunity. And that's largely due to a series of unique attributes that allow for a long life, internationally competitive operation, set to produce metals that are fundamentally important to clean and efficient energy use. So building blocks, if you like, for an energy efficient future. The highest environmental standards must be met and benefits must be clear in order for the opportunity pr to proceed. And what are the benefits? Well, the benefits are jobs. The benefits are opportunity. The benefits are stimulus for local communities, for local businesses. And with every successful project development in Greenland, the profile grows and the Greenland brand consolidates and becomes stronger and helps to secure ongoing investment in Greenland and so the process progresses. But it's important to acknowledge that these processes do not happen overnight. Companies need to understand that these are long-term projects, long-term investments. In our case, it's been the best part of 10 years, 60 to 70 million US dollars worth of investment to evaluate an opportunity. And that's even before you start the permitting process. So it requires an incredible level of cooperation, a lot of communication, in order to actually progress and move ultimately towards successful development. And this just touches on the diversity and cross-section of stakeholders that all have something to contribute and that are all involved in the, pro in the program. This extends from governments, in this case primarily the Greenland government, but also the Danish government, customers, media, non-government organisations, local communities, financiers, owners, international policy and conventions. It's a very diverse mix and they all have to be considered and ultimately integrated successfully. In our case, we've had to make sure that we communicate a lot of things that have been new to local communities in Greenland. The steps involved in developing and evaluating projects. This includes understanding environmental studies. What kind of jobs are involved? We're looking at environmental work, we're looking at technical work, we're looking at marketing work, we're looking at health and safety. Mining is a very, very diverse business and presents a lot of opportunities and requires a lot of support from outside businesses. So this comes about, we've provided initiatives such as Open Days with groups, consultants to provide insight. We've been able to work with the mining school, put on traineeships 
to help understand the programs, the opportunities and the processes involved in taking a project successfully through the evaluation and into mine development. So just to wrap up, I think based on our experience in Greenland, we've seen huge progress in the last 10 years, and that gives us confidence that the challenges ahead can be overcome. The needs of stakeholders can be met, and we can successfully see projects developed to the benefit of Greenland society. And in the case of the Kavanafeld project, the aim is straightforward, to develop a sustainable long-term new source of metals, materials that are essential to new technologies and energy efficient, energy efficient applications, but done to the benefit, the long-term benefit of Greenland society. So thank you very much, and I look forward to any discussion after the session's finished.